You ready? An excerpt from the listing of the common procedures used by Christians and the friars to introduce Christianity in Latin America states, quote, idols, temples, and other material evidences of paganism destroyed. Christian buildings often constructed with sites of, onto sites of destroyed native temples in order to symbolize and emphasize the substitution of one religion by the other. Hmm, maybe kind of sounds like the Ground Zero Mosque. Indians supplied construction labor without receiving payment. Maybe all the government officials in New York fighting the Christians and supporting Ground Zero Moss simply just went to public schools. Maybe that's what answered this. I want to go to David Barton. We were having this conversation yesterday before this story broke. He is the founder and president of Wall Builders. David also has a DVD collection uh, called the uh, American Heritage Series, which is excellent. David, G. Has this ever happened before? In first of all, tell me what's tell me what's happening here in America with the textbooks. Well, uh, there's a lot happening in this direction. This has been about 10 years we've been watching this. There is actually a group in America called the Council on Islamic Education. It is their task to affect textbooks, and they say their founder says we are undertaking a bloodless revolution in the classrooms of America's junior high and high school students. So we literally have this revolution underway. We've been watching this for a number of years. Uh, there is a great center in, in, in Los. Angeles, the, the Center for Jewish Policy, who keeps up with, with how this is treated, and the way that the textbooks treat Islam versus the way they treat Judaism or Christianity, really clear. That's a perfect example of what's out there. Okay. The, what, what kills me is here, we talk about um, the idols and temples and other material evidence of paganism destroyed and churches built on top of others. Could you please bring up the Sophia Mosque? David, can you tell me anything about the Sophia Mosque? This is in Istanbul. It's got a really interesting foundation. It is built right on top of the Christian the Christian church that they conquered when they took that area. And by the way, they, they note that there was all this peace in the 8th through 11th centuries. That's because Islam had conquered every Christian country out there and they ruled it with an iron fist for those 300 years. And that's why Islamic culture was advanced from Christian culture in those 300 years because they had conquered the whole Christian world, which is what led to the Crusades to okay. get it back. I want to, but I, I want to go back to this mosque because this mosque is in Istanbul. Mm -hmm. Istanbul used to be Constantinople. Con that's right, Christian city. Right, Const Constantinople, which is Constantine. This is the guy who brought it all together, and it's built on the ruins of. That's right. Right. Now, let me show you the Cordoba uh, Mosque. If you can bring that picture up, please. This is, remember, the Cordoba Initiative is the Ground Zero Mosque. What is the significance? This is the mosque of the Cardo uh, Cordoba. Uh, it's got the same foundation, built right on top of a Christian church they conquered. Okay. Now, America and David doesn't even know this. Please bring up, please bring up the picture of the um, uh, room of the Last Supper. This is the room that they say Jesus had the Last Supper in. This is not my photo because I'm in Washington. I have a photo of my wife and I standing in this room. And it is the most amazing room you've ever been in. Why? You can barely see it on that wall, but on that wall, that is, that is Arabic writing. Where this photo is taken from is the back corner. When you walk in, there's the back corner. There is a minaret in the corner. It has all been defaced and it has all been written. It is uh, a, a Muslim room or was. When you walk around the great city of Jerusalem and you see there is, there is one group of people that is very clear are trying to erase the Jews and Christianity. When you walk into the Jewish section you will find minarets. You will find, uh, well, for instance, the room of the Last Supper. They did not take the Islamic symbols out of there. They didn't do it. Why? Because it's part of human history. We have to learn by not erasing history. There is, at least what I have seen, there is one religion that is currently, currently trying to erase other religions. It's wrong when Christians do it. It's wrong when Jews do it. It's wrong when Buddhists do it. It's wrong when Islam does it. It's interesting and important to watch if anyone is currently trying to erase someone else. Back in a minute.
with uh, David Barton, and we were just looking at the uh, the test from uh, New York State, the Regents' test, where they are glorifying Islam and tearing apart Christianity. Uh, this is what we have to um, deal with, gang. David is one of the guys. Were you the leader of the Texas? I was one of the six guys on there that, that did all the Texas history standards. Yes, okay, um, and that was important for the country because. Uh, Texas is the second largest uh, book buyer, right? For it's now the largest because California is bankrupt, so we're right. now number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, nobody wanted to buy the textbooks from California anyway. Um, and we're just talking about the, the changing of history. Um, and this is why one of the things, David has been working with me very hard in the last year to make sure that you understand that history is changing and that you have to make sure that you teach your kids the truth because they're not getting it anyplace else. A couple of things that came to attention. I just said uh, when we're in the break, can somebody tell me what Istanbul means? Because it was Constantinople. Well, there's a disagreement. If you look to the Greeks, Istanbul means into the city. But if you ask the Turks, Istanbul is actually Islambul and means plenty of Islam. You decide. Constantinople and the, church, the uh, Mosque of Sophia built on the ruins of a Christian church. David, they're also doing things here in the United States. You and I had a conversation when we were walking around Mount Vernon, George yeah. Washington's house, and I told you something that I found amazing. I found a, a new website, I'm not even going to give the name of it out, um, that they are changing American history. Yeah, they are. One of the guys you introduced me to was Peter Salem. That's right. In our American, uh, African American heroes, this guy was one of the biggest African American heroes in That's the right. American Revolution. Real quick, just nutshell. The who hero of the Battle of Bunker Hill, he is credited with saving scores of American lives. He got 14 military commendations. They took him to George Washington, Commander in Chief, said, Here's the hero. Okay, now, look, the, put that picture back up again, real quick. And they are trying to make, they're trying to make this that Peter is hiding behind him, but he's not. He's not. You say. He's standing there with Thomas Grosvenor, and that was, that was typical in the Revolution, black and white fighting side by side. Okay. And so Peter Salem is the and uh, hero. Know, and we know that he's not hiding because the guy who painted the painting. Yep. Was John Trumbull, who was part of the American Revolution, fought in the battle of the Revolution. Okay, got it. So now. Here is not only are they trying to make him look like he was a slave and he was just hiding behind the white man. Not true. Now there is an effort to make Peter Salem, Peter Salim, the first Islamic hero in the American Revolution. David, tell me. Tell me about this one. Well, if you're going to take the word Salem and make it Salim, then I guess all those folks in Massachusetts live in Salim, Massachusetts as well. But well, it's crazy because there is not a single piece of historical evidence. No, no, no. This is revisionism. They're, no, no. they're purely taking it. No, no, no. He changed his name to Salem. This is from this website. Uh, he was known as Salem uh, Prince. Local legend has it that yeah. the name Salem, Salem, Massachusetts, came from a privateering port where all the sailors went during the Revolutionary War. They were fighting on their boats. His History reports, history reports that an old Jewish man told the people that the word was like shalom, which means peace, and the name for peace in Arabic is Salim. There's your history. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> that, to that's it. How, that's well, how we get Peter Salim. There you go. Back in a second. <laughs> There's something happening here in Washington, D.C. Um, that David and I were just talking haven't, ha hasn't happened. You will see something on Saturday that has not happened in America for 228 years. Mm -hmm. um, it is going to be a historic moment. And I promise you that you, if you read about it the next day or you see it on TV, you will say, oh, man, I wish I yeah. would have gone. Um, on Friday night, um, and tickets, there are no tickets to the Lincoln Memorial event on Saturday morning at 10 a.m., um, and there are free tickets. My wife was good enough um, to actually write the check to rent the um, Kennedy Center on Friday. We're doing something else that kind of is a prelude to this. David, you've been instrumental in helping me put this together. Explain quickly what's happening at the Kennedy Center 
on, uh, on Friday. With it really goes back 240 years, and that's to the Black Robe Regiment. It is a spiritual event at the Kennedy Center on Friday night. It is a resurrection of a lot of the famous sermons that were preached that led up to the revolution that caused the documents to be written, etc. So it's given the foundation. The spiritual leaders and pastors and right. clergy did it back then, and they'll do it again. And there are five um, um, members of the cloth from five different religions. This is not a Christian event. This is a God event right. on Friday and a God event on Saturday that you do not want to miss. Again, tickets are going to be extraordinarily scarce for the um, Kennedy Center, and I hate to be cryptic, but I'm just not going to give the media anything Hey, anything. They'll get it when everybody else gets it. Um, uh, but the, the main portion of the audience is going to be made up of uh, people by invitation. And you have my invitation to get any of the remaining tickets. And they will be available at 8 a.m. Friday at the box office. They are free at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. And then Saturday, you don't want to miss it. Come as you are. Leave your signs at home. Bring your children. Bring your spirit. And let me tell you something. You come as you are, but you leave there much more powerful. We'll see you Saturday at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. been raising funds for a while now for SOWF, the um, uh, Special Operations Warrior Foundation, which is just this amazing group of people that actually started when the, the helicopters um, um, uh, burned in the desert trying to rescue the hostages in Tehran. They looked at each other and said, if I don't make it back, will you take care of my children? Well, there are now 500 children from special forces that have been lost that need to be taken care of. And I told you a while back to expect miracles. Last week, I told you on this show of a person that sent me, said, I want to come to 828, but I can't afford it. And I want to give something to the special forces. And they gave eight cents. That's all they had, eight pennies. I told you miracles would come from that. Let me show you another one. This comes in from a guy who moved here from Poland. He saw the eight pennies and said, I want to give something else myself. It's all the change that he has had for the last, and everything, there's, there's pocket fuzz and everything else in here, from the last seven years. I don't know, there must be $1,000 in here. It's going to go to the Special Forces. If you would like to read more about it, you can go to glennbeck.com slash 828. From Washington, D.C., good night, America. Yeah.